Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 7R, the last lecture of Module 7. And here we're going to talk about what happens with the sex chromosomes in meiosis. I kind of neglected to mention earlier that the basic principles that we learned about how meiosis works don't easily apply to the sex chromosomes. But the sex chromosomes have found a very clever way to solve this problem. And this has created some interesting implications for the genes that we inherit on the X and Y chromosome from our mother and from our father. Now, you might be wondering why this lecture has been left till the very end of module seven. I admit I'm wondering that too. But it, you can watch it whenever you like. Here are the sex chromosomes, two X chromosomes in females, X, X, and an X chromosome and a Y chromosome in males. Now, and you might think that they have some, now that I've raised the question, you might think that these chromosomes have some sort of special mechanism to get themselves properly through meiosis. But really, they don't. They use the same meiotic machinery that the autosomes use. But they have to do something kind of special in order to be able to use this machinery. So for the two X chromosomes in females, there's no problem. As far as meiosis con is concerned, the X chromosomes are just another pair of autosomes. They're fully hom homologous along their length, and they can pair and cross over exactly the same as autosomes. So there's no problem there. But in males, the situation is different. The X and Y chromosome are very different chromosomes. They're even very different lengths. So how do they know to go to opposite poles of the cell? The autosomes solve this by pairing and then having the pair pulled apart by the spindle fibers. What do the X and Y chromosome do? Well, they pretend to be autosomes. And they do this by having at their ends sequences that are homologous between the X and the Y. So at the short end of the Y chromosome are sequences that are homologous to, very similar to, sequences at the short end of the X chromosome. And at the short, long end of the Y chromosome are sequences that are homologous to sequences at the long end of the X chromosome. These are different versions of the same sequences in exactly the same way that the different alleles that are on homologous autosomes are different versions of the same sequences. This homology allows these sequences to pair in meiosis in the same way that the autosomes pair in a meiosis. So the tips pair, and that's shown in this diagram here. This pairing, as I've noted, requires a bit of effort on the part of the X chromosome because it's so much longer than the Y chromosome. But at this scale, the chromosomes are actually fairly flexible. And so the ends are able to pair just like autosomes. Not only do they pair, but they cross over. In fact, a crossover between the X and Y chromosome is obligate. There needs to be at least one in every meiosis for exactly the same reason that there needs to be at least one crossover between homologous autosomes that have paired in meiosis. The crossover serves to tie the homologs together, or in this case, to tie the X and Y chromosome together so that the spindle fibers can tug on them and bring them to the center of the cell without pulling them apart, thereby making sure that the X and the Y chromosomes, when they do separate, move to opposite poles of the cell. Now, the genetic consequence of this is that alleles in these pseudo, in these regions, don't show X-linked inheritance or Y-linked inheritance. Instead, because of the crossovers, alleles that were present on the X chromosome at the tip in this region may wind up in the next generation on the Y chromosome and vice versa. 
that means that these sequences at the tips, these homologous sequences, are inherited just like autosomes. And because of that, they're called, the regions are called the pseudoautosomal regions of the X and Y chromosome. What this means for you is that you may have pieces of chromosomes that you didn't think you would have. If you're female, you inherited an X chromosome from your father as well as your mother. But that X chromosome may have had at its tips sequences that came from your dad's Y chromosome. If you're male, you got a Y chromosome from your dad and an X chromosome from your mom. And that Y chromosome may have had at its tips sequences that came from your dad's X chromosome. That's the X chromosome that your dad inherited from his mother, your paternal grandmother. So these sequences have a more complex and interesting history than the autosomes might have. Now, what are these genes that are at the tips of the chromosomes? Well, here's diagrams of the X and Y chromosomes. At the tips, there are about, and estimates vary, there are about 29 pseudoautosomal genes that are present at the tips of both the X and the Y. And those genes are listed here. At one end of the X and the Y, there's a fairly large cluster of genes. At the other end, there's only about three genes that are known. These are the genes that are genuinely pseudo-autosomal. They move back and forth. Alleles are present on both the X and the Y, and alleles move back and forth because of the obligate crossovers. Other genes on the Y chromosome, two genes on the Y chromosome, actually do have homologs on the X chromosome, but they're not part of the crossing over region, so they don't behave like autosomes. And then there are a set of other genes on the Y chromosome that are not in the pseudoautosomal region that are specific to the Y chromosome. And this includes our old friend SRY, the sex determining region, the gene that determines whether a baby develops as a male or a female. So here's a question. Would you expect genes in the pseudoautosomal region of the X chromosome to undergo X inactivation when they're in females, along with the rest of the X chromosome? And the answer is no. The reason that the rest of the X chromosome needs to go under in it to undergo inactivation is because males have only one copy of these genes. But for the pseudoautosomal genes, both males and females have two copies, so no inactivation is needed, no dosage compensation is needed. So what we've done, we've considered how the X and Y chromosomes manage to separate properly in meiosis. And they do this because their tips are homologous, so they can pair and cross over in meiosis. And they're homologous in exactly the same way that the homologous autosomes that we have are homologous. At least one crossover happens in every male meiosis. Because these segments cross over, they don't behave like the X-link genes that we're going to analyze in module 8. Instead, they behave like autosomes genetically. These regions are not X inactivated in females because they don't need to be. There's no need for dosage compensation because males and females have the same dosages. Now, coming up next, it's module 8, where we're going to move into genetic analysis. Genetic analysis is using crosses, using analysis of phenotypes to gain understanding of how genes are inherited and how they work. Almost everything, until recently, almost everything that we knew about genes and about inheritance had been learned through genetic analysis. And it's 
if nothing else, a very powerful way to test your understanding. I hope to see you there.